Hey everybody, Alan Noon here, and uh, welcome to the stream. Today we're going to be looking at Paper 2D, and uh, depending on how far we get, maybe some UMG, but um, what we're going to do today is build a 2D side-scrolling game. Now, being a, a retro game fan, we're going to go for that 8-bit style, the real chunky, blocky graphics, so uh, I'll show you how to set up your project and uh, get some artwork imported, and we'll be on our way. Yeah, speaking of artwork, to start with, Let's uh, go ahead over to unrealengine.com. If you go to the community tab and then the forums, if you click down under events, and you should see uh, here is the forum thread for this project here, creating the 2D project. Uh, scroll down a little bit, you'll see the source.zip file. Go ahead and download that, and there's a handful of uh, textures in there that we're going to need for today. So download that, put it somewhere accessible real quick. And in the meantime, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, launch the engine. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, we're going to create this thing right from scratch. From the very beginning, as you see, opening the, the editor and creating our project hierarchy, importing all the content, and step by step, we're going to go ahead and build this thing out. And like I said, uh, short stream today, only an hour, so we'll see how far we get. But uh, to save a little time, I'm going to start with a template. I'm going to start with a 2D side-scroller blueprint template. And let's go ahead and figure out where to put this. I've got my project folder set up here. And you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine demo. And uh, we don't need any starter content, so you can go ahead and turn that to no content. All right. So some of my favorite games from back in the day, Castlevania, Contra, uh, Metroid, Mega Man. So we're going to be building something kind of in that style, a run-and-jump, shoot, platformer type of game. All righty. Okay, here we go. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and play in a new editor window. So this is the template, if you're not familiar with it. We have some very simple controls for running left and right and jumping. We don't have a jump animation, so we're going to fix that up. And uh, let's go into the Blueprints folder, and we'll take a look at this character. So if you open up 2D Side Scroller Character, let's go over to the Viewport tab here, and we can take a look at our different components. So we have our capsule component. That's that little pill there. That's what we use to uh, interact with the world. That's going to do our collision. And we have an arrow component just to kind of tell us which way we're facing. And we have our sprite component here. You can see we have our animated sprite. Yes, that's a little 2D version of our template dude. And then we have a camera attached to a boom. You see this red line? This is a spring arm. And there's the camera hanging off the end of it there. And then we have the character movement component. And uh, this is a, p a component here that basically handles all of our uh, movement, keeps track of our velocities, jumping, running, walking, flying, swimming, what have you. As I select on that, you'll see over down the side here, these are all the different settings that we can uh, interact with. So let's go ahead and jump over to the event graph. Very simple graph. We'll start here at uh, movement. So basically, we're reading the movement here. I've got WASD hooked up. We're adding movement to the, the pawn. And then over here, we're doing a, this is a custom event. This is update animation. We'll jump back to that in a second. But then this area here basically handles orientation. So we just we take a look at the value coming in from the controller. And if it's greater or less than, we either face the sprite left or right. That's all. Let's go over to Update Animation. So if we double click, it's going to jump up in the graph here. And uh, what are we doing? So basically, we're just getting the velocity of the character that we've set down below. We're getting the magnitude of that vector. That's basically the, the speed. And we're comparing it against zero. And then depending on whether or not that's true or false, whether we're greater than zero or not, we're going to pick an animation to play. We have an idle animation here. And then we have a running animation. And then we're setting that value here. And that is the actual flipbook that we're going to be playing. A flipbook is a sprite animation in the Paper 2D system. So probably one of the first things that we want to do is get our new sprites in there instead of our blue template guy. So uh, let's do a little bit of setup here. Let's go back to the content uh, folder of the asset browser. I'm just going to make a new folder. And uh, I'm going to call that demo. I'm going to go ahead and isolate all the new stuff that we're making. And uh, let's make a Blueprint folder. And in case you don't know it, fairly recent feature, you can go ahead and set the color of these folders. So 
being a blueprint. I like those to pop out, so we'll make that blue. And uh, let's go back up. So this is the original content here. This is our character. I'm going to go ahead and just dupe this. So let's drag that over to the Blueprint folder we just created. And I'm going to say Copy. So now when we click over, here's our new guy. And uh, I'm going to rename him BP for Blueprint. And uh, he's going to be our dude. Very good. So exact same character that we had before. Same graph, same component hierarchy, but uh, new version. All right, so now if we, um, what we want to do is make sure that our game is actually using our dude. So let's go up to settings and uh, we'll turn on our world settings. You'll see this panel popped over onto the side here. And uh, we want to look at the game mode. So currently we are using the 2D side scrolling game mode that was built for this uh, particular template. And uh, we can go ahead and use that, or if we wanted to for whatever reason, we could create a new game mode here by either clicking the plus button or in the asset browser, we could make a new, a new game mode. But, um, we don't have to go through all that. So if you see down here, uh, default pawn class, let's go ahead and pick our dude there. And again, if we hit play now, this would look exactly the same because we have made no changes to our character at this point. All righty. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, since we're doing a retro game, I'm going to go ahead and look at this from the front view. And we'll turn on lit mode. All right, so here's our stuff way out here. All right, so you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here already. It doesn't really fit with the style of game that we're going to be making. So let's clean this up a little bit and start from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and make another new folder, and um, I'm going to call this Maps. And then from the File menu, I'm going to say New Level. I'll start with the default. And then right out of the gate, I'm going to go ahead and say Save As. And to our new folder there, we'll just call this Level 00. All right, very good. All right, nice clean slate to start with. And then, you know, just in case anything untoward happens, let's go over to our project settings again. And under Maps and Modes, you see here we have the default maps and the startup map. If we click this little triangle here, we can pick which level we're going to start with. So now, whenever we come back into the editor for this project, we're going to start on our nice clean level. And uh, whenever we play the game, this is the map that we're going to start with. All right. Again, so let's take a quick look at this. All right. So we are actually running around on the ground. We just can't see it there due to the way that our camera is set up. So I think before we get into camera, though, let's take a look at our, our sprites. Let's go ahead and make a new folder, selecting Demo, New Folder. And we'll say Sprites. And I'm going to make another new folder here. Whoops, new folder. And this will be our character. All right, now I'm going to browse over to our project. So let's see. Actually, where did I put that stuff? OK, up on the desktop here, here's our artwork. And let's go back there. This is my project project folder here. I'm going to create, this is just my my uh, workflow. I like to create a source folder within my project, keep it all together. And we'll drag this in. So we've got some character art, a couple random other pieces of miscellaneous art, and some uh, environment art as well. We'll take a look at in a second. All right, we don't really need to look at tutorials. Okay. So for our character, let's go ahead and right click and we'll say import. And we're going to go ahead and find our, let's see, there's our projects, demo, source. OK, here's our artwork here. So I'm going to just grab our character art and drag that right into the browser. Or actually, I'm selecting at this point. Yeah, we'll do that. OK. <laughs> All right, so what had happened there is you can actually drag and drop assets into the browser, which is what I typically do. But since I'm working on one screen, I went to import and basically imported it twice anyway. All right, so here's our, here's our sprite. It's basically um, a texture at this point. So if we go ahead and uh, open this up and we zoom in here, you can see we have our character art, and it looks a little fuzzy. And the reason that is is because it was authored at such a low res because we are doing a low res 8-bit style game. And uh, we've got bilinear filtering going on and all sorts of other stuff uh, that you would typically want in a texture that was mapped on a model. But for our retro game, that's not really what we're going for. So 
Let's go back out to our asset browser here. And if we right click on that texture, up on Sprite Actions, if we scroll over, I did that a little fast, but if we say Create Sprite, uh, that's not what I want to do. Let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, if I right click Sprite Actions, and then uh, we want to use Configure for Retro Sprites. So you see that the texture changed there a little bit. Now if I double click and open that up, a little bit difficult to tell with this background. But if I zoom in here, you'll see things are nice and uh, we have that nice hard edge going on. And the reason that is is because we swap the texture group here. Basically, these are a bunch of different uh, configurations that you can use for textures. And uh, the one that we want to use right now is UI. Basically, all that does is says that um, it's going to set our texture compression to uncompressed and uh, turn off our filtering. All right. So now we want to create sprites out of this. So we'll go ahead and right click this again. And we're going to go ahead and extract sprites. So we do that. And boom, there we go. We have all of our sprites. So since this texture was created with all of the different frames nice and evenly spaced, it was a pretty easy job for Unreal to go ahead and just extract all these in one shot. So if we double click, so this is our first sprite here. A uh, couple things we want to change right out of the gate. I like to show the grid. And I'm going to change this from uh, 10 units to 1. So what I'm really trying to go for here is I like working with one pixel per grid unit. If you scroll over to the side here on the details panel, you see pixels per unit. It defaults to 1.28. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 1. And if we zoom back up, there you go. You see each pixel of the character maps directly to a unit in Unreal Space. So uh, the other thing I like to do is for characters, we have this pivot mode. I like to go ahead and set that to bottom center. So now we have them kind of sitting on this plane here. It's a nice, uh, when we're doing our animations, it's a good way to line things up. It basically acts as a ground plane. All right. So we'll save him. He's cool. Now, we could go through and do each one of those individually, but that takes a lot of time. So the fast way around this is I'm going to go ahead and shift click and select all the remaining sprites. And then right click, and then from midway up, you'll see Asset Actions. Let's scroll over and down, and from the Property Matrix, we can see all of the sprites that we had selected. Now over on the side here, we can see all of the parameters that are common to sprites. And again, the ones that we're interested in, pixels per unit, and we want to go bottom center. Okay. Cool. So again, now we've got this guy lined up on the on the floor plane, and uh, we're snapping to the grid. So everything's good. All right, um, real quick here. So I'm monitoring questions over on the other monitor here. Uh, can you? The first question is, can you please show the same process but without the sprite sheet? I'm an animator, so I have frame by frame sequence. So uh, really, all you would do is you would drag in or import your individual frames and. Um, th Instead of doing the extract uh, sprites, you would just say create sprite, and it would automatically turn your single frames into a sprite. So it's uh, a lot easier and quicker, though, to pack your sprites. So in the end, there's no big difference, but it uh, just really depends on how you want to work. All right, so what were we up to? Uh, we made our sprites, and now we need some animations. So we'll start with a stance. So the first three, yeah, normally, by the way, I would go through and rename all of these, but we don't really have time for all that. So. Let's go ahead and select our first three frames here. This is going to be our first animation, our stance animation, or our idle animation. And we'll right click, and we're going to create what's called a flipbook. So there it is there. And I'm going to preface it with A for animation, and uh, I'll call it stance. All right, so there we see our uh, twitchy little guy. If I hit Enter and open him up, here we are in the flipbook editor. OK, so we have uh, frames per second over here. Now, typically, I don't mess around with the frames per second too much. I leave it at the default 15. Uh, you can go ahead and adjust this on an animation by animation basis. But I like to have consistency there. And if I'm going to be adjusting the timing of my animations, I'll typically do it down in the timeline. You see we have these three white boxes. Now, you can go ahead and drag these out. And this is basically how many ticks or how many, uh, basically the hold for each frame of animation. So if you mouse over, you can see that uh, you actually get information on which sprite is being used per frame. So this is sprite 0, sprite 1, and sprite 2. 
So uh, not the world's most interesting stance animation, but it'll work. And uh, if we wanted to add new frames, we could go ahead and do that here. Or over from the list, you'll see the same list of sprites here as well. So we could go ahead and hit this plus key and add sprites. So however you want to work, really, is how you can do it there. And we have a reference to the material. I don't think we're going to cover materials and sprite materials today. There are a bunch of, oh, by the way, I'm working in 4.7, uh, 0.6. Uh, 4.8 is on the way. There's a lot of new Paper 2D um, features and functionality coming along. That's really cool, uh, some new material stuff. So I'm going to hold off on materials for today. But just so you know, this is where you would access materials for your flipbooks. All right, so there's our first animation. And uh, to get us started, we'll need a jump. Now, the jump is just one frame, so we'll go ahead and Create a flip book, and again, I'll call it a jump. And we don't really need to do too much in here because one frame, that's fine. We don't need to adjust any timings. And uh, we want our run. We need a run to get us going here as well. So there are three frames for the run. I'm going to go ahead and create a flip book again, and then a run. All right, so this looks pretty bad. Let's go ahead and I think we probably want like three or four f ticks here. Okay, getting better, but uh, looks a little funky. And the reason is because even though there are three distinct frames in the animation, the way that this was originally designed was the crossing frame, this frame here, sprite nine, is gonna, we're gonna use that twice. We're gonna duplicate that. So if we go ahead and right click and duplicate, so now you see there's sprite nine and there's sprite nine again. We can click and drag this to the end of the timeline. So now we have our crossing frame at the beginning and the end of the anim or sorry, the, the middle and the end of the animation, and it uh, looks a little better. All right. And we'll just wait for autosave. All right, good time to check the questions. Uh, sprites flipbook will be used for UMG for use of simple animations. Um, oh, so I guess the question is, can you use sprites in UMG? Uh, you know, actually, I'm not sure. I haven't tried it, but uh, typically I think you'd probably want to use uh, some of the more standard methods for animating textures like a UV offset or something something to that effect. Okay. All right. Uh, that's probably good. good enough to get going here. And let's see. Let's go back. All right. So let's go ahead and fix up our character blueprint. Oh, real quick, I saw this question pop up. How do you create a sprite sheet? So um, externally, typically, with uh, Photoshop or GIMP or you know whatever methods you want to use, there's a ton of uh, 2D animation tools out there, um, the names of which are escaping me at the moment. But uh, basically, any way that you can make a texture, uh, is that's what you would use for um, a sprite. All right, so our character. Double click to open him back up, and uh, let's go to the viewport. First things first, let's click our sprite component, and uh, we'll get rid of our blue guy here. So let's uh, pick our stance. Okay, so first thing that we see, we have our tiny little retro sprite, and uh, our collision capsule is pretty huge. So if we went ahead and hit play now, uh, oh, you know what? Did I not pick? over to our world settings. Ah, yeah, because I made a new level, I have to override the game mode again. So let's go ahead and hijack that side-scrolling game mode. And, uh, okay, so there's BP Dude. All right, so now when we play, why is Dude? Oh, because we need to replace the other animations. All right, so let's go to the event graph. All right, and here you see where we're updating animation. We mentioned that previously. Let's go ahead and pick our stance animation for the idle and our run animation. Okay, so that should be good. There we go. All right, so way off in the distance, you see our tiny little guy. I'm going to go ahead and hit the tilde key and say show collision. All right, so you can see that the capsule is really huge. It's actually resting on the ground there. That's currently invisible due to the way the camera's set up. So we have a bunch of stuff to fix up, really. So first things first, I think maybe what we'll do is um, let's go ahead and fix that camera. So we'll take our camera boom and um, just go ahead and reset some of this stuff here. If we go to the viewport, you see that uh, we've got like this offset here on the boom, on the spring arm. So let's go ahead and just bring that back down so we're looking directly at our character there. Next, we'll pick the camera. 
And uh, you'll see that we're set for uh, an ortho camera, which is ultimately what we want. Really quick though, let's go ahead and hit perspective. Now if we hit play, so we can see our guy is actually moving around in the world. He's floating in the air because of that capsule. It does not match the sprite size. So that's probably the next thing we should fix up. Let's go back to our ortho view here. And um, yeah, let's do that. Let's get our capsule. Where's our capsule? And we're going to go ahead and shrink that down. So uh, we have two settings here, capsule radius. And we'll make that really tiny. There we go, somewhere, probably not that tiny. Let's go somewhere in the neighborhood of eight, I found works pretty well for this particular sprite. And then the half height, we're gonna take that way down. And we're gonna turn that to 10 is a pretty decent size. All right, now let's grab our sprite. You can just go ahead and select him and we're just gonna pull him down so that the capsule matches him a little bit better. Somewhere probably in the neighborhood of that. So again, hard to see because we don't have our resolution set properly. So let's go over to our camera again. All right. So you see here that uh, the size of our uh, camera is actually 2048. We want to change that up. Now, ultimately, let's say we're going to have this game uh, presented on a console or a PC where the typical resolution is going to be 1080, right? Uh, I'm working on a monitor here. I don't think I have a tremendous amount of real estate for a 1080 uh, viewport when I'm playing. So what I want to do is uh, actually reduce that size. And uh, first I need to figure out what my final resolution is gonna be. So again, real quick, let's take a look at this. So on a 1080 screen, our guy is like really tiny. After doing a little bit of a mock-up in Photoshop, I found that uh, I really, what I wanna do is reduce the size of this camera so that our character actually like fits the screen a little bit better to emulate the resolution of an old school console. And so I found if, um, if I take that uh, 1080 resolution and start dividing it out, a, a good size was, uh, I think I wanted to use 384 by 216. So let's go ahead and change that. So now when I play, there we go. So now our guy's sized a little bit better on the screen. And let's take a look at this for a second. A couple things you might notice. So you see how the pixels are not pixel perfect as the guy is shifting around on his animation there. You can see some of the pixels are not square. And again, that's because, so we've decided on our final resolution, but the actual editor window that we're playing in doesn't match. They're not, um, they're not multiples of each other. So you could continue working like this if you like, but uh, that's the kind of thing that really gets under my skin. So uh, let's go to editor preferences under the edit menu. And down under play, you'll see that we have a new window size. We want to make this some multiple of our final resolution. And uh, just so I have a little bit of space when I'm working here, uh, what is it, 648. So if I go ahead and play, that should look a little bit better. So now you see that our pixels are perfect. They're perfectly square. And again, that's because our play and editor window, now the resolution is a multiple of our final output resolution. So things are scaled up um, on the, at um, hard levels, I'll say, I guess. Okay, very good. All right, so I think maybe the next thing we wanna do, um, let's take a look again. So you see, I'm actually jumping around here. So we're not seeing our ground plane, which is kind of disturbing. And the reason that is, is over in our level here, let's go to our perspective view. So you see, this is uh, the player start. That's where we're actually starting the game from. Actually, we're gonna be looking at it from this direction because we face to the right. So the camera boom is actually intercepting this ground plane here. So if we slide that back a little bit, then it should be out of the range of the camera. So now when we hit play, you know, first things first, let's go ahead and adjust the rotation. This is the directional light in the scene. I'm trying to light up that front edge a little bit. There we go. All right, so now we can see, we have a frame of reference for how fast we're moving. And jump is pretty intense and he's going a little fast there. So let's tweak that out. So back to our character. Okay, character movement. As I mentioned before, this component handles everything related to uh, movement states, whether we're running, walking, flying, and uh, the various speeds that we uh, do those things at. So for starters, let's do a search for walk. And we have a couple of different settings here. Let's find our walk speed. Um, you know, just let's take a guess, maybe 120. And uh, let's fix the jump as well. 
So jump velocity, yeah, that's way overboard. And uh, maybe 300 is a little bit better. Actually, I think from memory, 350 works out pretty decently. Okay, so that looks a little more reasonable. Jump is a little bit shallow, but yeah, let's go ahead and let's try 400 maybe. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, so that's uh, that's the basics of uh, moving this guy around. It's uh, pretty good progress for about 20 minutes work. All right, what should we do next? Uh, he looks like he's sitting. Uh, well, I'm not gonna. Let's go back. I'm not gonna adjust. Bother adjusting the um, the height of the character. You see, we have that little bit of a gap there. We're gonna start bringing in some environment sprites, and uh, things will match up a little bit better. Uh, so we won't worry about that for the time being. All right, let's take a break real quick here and uh, look at some of our questions. Um, let's see. I found that there's a motion. Here's the first question that we have. I found there's a motion blur while the character moves. Is there an easy way to reduce or disable it? It's weird in a 2D game. So if you're seeing that, um, I don't have a global post-process volume in this particular. There might be one on the character here. I don't have one in the scene, but if we look at our camera and kill our filter, all right, if we look for a uh, blur, yeah, so I don't have any, check to double, double check to make sure that you don't have motion blur enabled over here. That should, uh, that should disable it, so. There we go. Yeah, I didn't particularly notice it on mine, so. And again, that's on that was at the camera level of my character. It may be depending on which level you started with, you might have a what's called a global post process already in here. So you'd want to select that volume, and then in the details panel, you adjust that same exact setting. All right. Okay, there's a couple other questions, but uh, we'll wait on those for now. Okay, so let's do some environment stuff. Uh, let's see sprites and a new folder. And uh, we'll just call it NV. And if we go back to our source folder here, we have this tiles map. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag that right in. And again, we've got uh, the filtering and compression setting issue. So we want to go ahead and, from Sprite Actions, configure for retro sprites. Now if we double click. So we got a bunch of goodies packed into here. We have some big blocks and some bits and pieces and doodads that we can use. All good. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that we could handle this. I'm going to show you one way today and then a second way later. I think we're going to break this out into multiple streams at some point. Uh, the first way is we're just going to extract these as sprites as we did before with the character. And uh, that way we'll have collision on them and we can just go ahead and drag and drop them into the level and our character can run around on them. Now the second way to work with environment art is we can create what's called a tile map. And I don't want to go too far down this road, but it's really awesome, so I'll show you real quick. If you right click and say Sprite Actions, you can create a tile set, which creates a new asset. And then from here, if you go in, again, I don't want to get too far into this, but basically I've authored this piece of art here so that by changing these dimensions, now if I start clicking around, there you go. You see how I have that little white outline there? I can grab pieces of these as tiles and basically stitch together an, entri an entire level or different assets that I can then drag and drop by means of making a tile set, or a tile map, actually. So I think that's under miscellaneous and tile map. All right, see, I'm already going down this road because this is just, like, too fun not to do. So you click this button. Here's our tile set. And I'll leave it here for you to explore because, like I said, there's a lot of new functionality coming in 4.8 that makes tile sets and tile maps even better than they are now. But um, it's fun to play with. I'll leave that up to you. Let's go back and just handle this at, uh, like, a regular set of sprites. All right, we'll get rid of those. Very good. Cool. Okay. So again, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to ex extract these sprites. So from spri right click, Sprite Actions, Extract Sprites. 
Okay, so here we see all of our bits and pieces, and you'll notice that our blocks were packed together really tightly. So they're all kind of in one sprite at this point, which is not exactly what we want. So we're going to get into some of these tabs up here. So if we click this uh, second tab, you can see Edit Sprite Region, and we get this uh, set of handles here. We can now adjust this. And again, let's go ahead and turn on our grid. And we'll want to change this to 1 so that we have uh, 1 pixel per grid unit. All right, so now... There we go. There's our first block. And if we click the next tab, we can see here's our collision geometry. Now, in this particular case, very simple geometry works just fine. And then we have what's called render geometry as well. And uh, you can go ahead and manipulate this stuff. So let's get a new piece of art, actually. This is better illustrated using something like this. Here we go. OK, so you see here, this piece of art actually has some cutouts some overhangs. If we needed, for whatever reason, more of a pixel-perfect accuracy, and I'm probably going to have to go and change all of these. Now, we've got, uh, under the collision section here, we can go ahead and pick a few different methods for determining collision. So if we say shrink, uh, shrink wrapped, all right, does a not so bad job there. Now we can start going in here and moving these things around and matching them up. And I'm just going to delete that one. So yeah, if we needed pixel perfect accuracy, we could go in there and, and go ahead and edit. If you hold shift and click on one of these edges, you'll get new verts. But we don't really need that for this. Let's go ahead and do tight bounding box. And then similarly, now let's say, again, the way that this was authored, our sprites have a little bit of real estate around them so that they're extracted easily. But depending on how large your game ultimately is, you can really get um, pretty tight with packing your sprites together. If you wanted, you could actually have, let's go ahead and look at this guy. You know, we could have packed some of these doodads in under these underhangs, and then we could have gone and edited the render region for those underhangs. And again, if we just hold shift and start clicking, should be able to hold shift and start clicking then uh, we can go ahead and edit what portion of this sprite is actually rendered. So you could basically crop out any of the other art that would be intruding into the space of this particular sprite. All right. You know what? While I'm here, let's go ahead to the property matrix again. And uh, that's asset right click, asset actions, and property matrix. And under sprite, Let's set this to 1, so we have 1 unit per pixel. And uh, we don't really have to mess with center for environment art. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. OK. All right, so what were we doing? We were looking at our first block here. So we need to make a few more blocks so we have some variety. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And we'll let's dupe that again. OK. All right. So now, what I want to do is, um, can I refresh that? You know what I should have done is, let's re we will rename these. All right. This is going to be a lot faster just to, this is going to be a lot faster just to get rid of these guys instead of hunting all over the asset browser for them. Let's just go ahead and get rid of those. All right, let's recreate that. So now we have our block. And again, we're going to duplicate it. And we'll select both and duplicate those again. And select them again. And then one more. OK, so now we have enough blocks for all nine different styles that we have. And uh, these are 48 pixels wide. So I think uh, let's go ahead and select, we'll select this next batch. And again, from the property matrix, asset actions, property matrix, from sprites and our source, a little hard to see here, source UVs. So if I go ahead and enter minus 48, let's pull this back here. All right. 
There we go. Minus 4, 8. Why is that not sticking? No. Bear with me one second here. Yeah, that's our source UV. We should be able to just drop that down. Why are you not working? So really what we want to do is grab this guy. All right, so I'm in some funky mode here. For some reason it's not taking my keyboard input. Property matrix. Source UVs, and we should be able to just adjust. Let's try that one more time. Oh, you know why? Because I actually want to go positive. <laughs> there we go. All right, so yeah, actually, so the coordinate system is uh, upper left-hand corner. Sorry, I was going backwards. So now you see that I adjusted those. That's uh, dropped it down a row in the source sheet. So now we have those nice striped ones and let's go ahead and do this again property matrix sprites source uvs and it should be 96 this time okay so now we have sort of that model look all right so now let's get every other one here get rid of that and we're going to move those over horizontally. Okay, so now you see we have a different style there again. And let's pick every third one. And from the property matrix, source UVs. And we're going to slide them over two spaces. Okay, there we go. So now we have three different sizes, three different size bevels for three different uh, styles of, of block. OK, great. All right. Looking at the questions real quick here. Yeah, let's see. You keep adjusting the pixel size of the art you import. Is it possible to change the default value so that they come in at a size you commonly need? Yes. At least in 4.8 you can. Let's see if we can do it here. So edit preferences. Uh, actually, it might be in the project settings, come to think of it. So we say project and paper 2D. It's not there. Actually, this might be a, f oh, here it is, default pixels per unit. Yeah, we could actually set this and then set that as our default, yes. Okay, so we have some background art, and uh, we have our character kind of running around looking a little bit better. So let's go ahead and get rid of our BSP background here. And I'm going to go to the front view and lit mode, and we can just go ahead and start dragging these things into the world. So there's one, and I'm just using alt and dragging to make a new one, like so. We'll just make a few more. I'm going to change the elevation a little bit to make it a little more interesting. All right, maybe one or two more. And then we'll change this up. We'll throw in a hazard block here, I'll call it. And you can use your mouse keys to go ahead and mouse these around, or uh, sorry, cursor keys. All right, so I authored all this stuff in uh, grayscale so that when we drop a sprite in, we can actually change the color of these things if we wanted. Basically, we're just blending a color over the top. There we go. Change up a few more of these. All right, you get the idea. Okay, so I suspect, there we go. All right, so what's happening there? So we're, we're running into, we're colliding with our sprite geometry and we're losing our camera. So let's take a look. 
back in our blueprints. I believe that's in our camera boom there. Uh, if you select the camera boom over in the right hand side, you'll see this uh, setting for do collision test. We want to turn that off. So now when we play, there we go. All right, so you see that little step there? So this particular piece of geometry is a little too high to step up on, but this one we can. I'm just going to show you this real quick. If we go back to our character and we look at our movement component and we do a search for step, we can fine tune the height at which our character can step up. Right now it's really high. Um, let's go ahead and change that. Well, just for the sake of the demonstration, we'll make it even higher. This is the uh, so now, like when we run over to this block, we should step up. Let's see. Should be stepping way up on top of that. We can make it really ridiculous. No, uh, I might be colliding too low. Ah, there we go. So you see how I can't walk on top of that guy now? I think what I actually want to do should be turning that down. No. Actually, let's adjust our radius here. Yeah, so our guy wasn't quite sitting where we want him to be. All right, let's pull him down one more pixel. See if he sits on the ground a little bit better. There we go. And back to our level. Yeah, there we go. He should slide right over the top. Okay, cool. All right. So um, how much time we have? 15 minutes or so. Let's go ahead and uh, let's fix up his jump next. OK, so back to our character and from our event graph. So we have our jump action down here. So this is uh, built into the uh, character movement component. Basically, we just call the jump function, and that launches him at the velocity we set earlier. Uh, we don't have any animation set up currently for this. So what we want to do is play a new flipbook, and uh, we have to determine whether or not the character is jumping. So real quick, let's go ahead and make a new variable called is jumping. And I'm going to compile that. And uh, we're going to get it, and we'll say if that's true, so we'll do a branch. You know, let's go handle this up in the animation. Let's drag this all the way up here. And we're going to we'll make sure this happens before our actual running around. So if the character is jumping, we want to go ahead and set a flipbook. And we want to play the jump animation. OK, if he's not jumping, then we'll just go ahead and do our running around. Now, way down here, we actually have to tell him that he's jumping, so we want to set jumping. So we'll say, is jumping true? And there we go. All right. So you saw that he jumped, and he's in his jump animation there, but he doesn't know what to do once he hits the ground. So again, thanks to our character movement con component, there is a function called uh, landed. We have event on landed here. And basically, we're going to use this to reset our character state. So we'll go ahead and set is jumping to false. So again, because we aren't jumping, the, uh, anima the running animation should take over again. All right. OK, so basically, um, now you notice that I'm like explicitly setting animations here, and that's because currently there is no way to take advantage of an animation blueprint like you would in a 3D character. So and typically, like in a game like this, a retro style thing, there's only a, a handful of different states or animations that you're going to be running through. So setting them explicitly isn't that big of a deal. But as you can imagine, as we add, you know, crouching and sliding and climbing and, you know, shooting and all that other stuff, our graph is going to get pretty crazy with uh, all of these booleans and uh, getting and setting states. So a way to clean that up, you can kind of create your own little state machine here. So let's go over and um, you know, I'll just do it from here. Let's go ahead and right click 
and I'm going to create uh, an enum. So that is from Blueprints Enumeration. And we'll call this like character states. All right. So we want to click this button over here, New. And uh, we're just going to add a bunch of these. So we'll have a state for standing. And we'll have a state for running, in case we need that. And we'll need a state for jumping. And then, you know, ultimately down the road, we'd probably add a crouch. And we need to know whether or not our character has been hit. And at some point, he's probably going to die, so we'll need to know if he's dead. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Now back on our character, we can add a new variable. And uh, we'll just call this uh, state, I guess. And if we go and change the type over here down to enum, the enum that we created right at the top is character states. And we'll set the default to standing. That's the first one there. That works great. So now we can drag this in and get it and say if it is equal to jumping, that should just go ahead and work. And uh, instead of using, again, instead of using these Booleans, let's go ahead and we're going to set this to jumping here. And I'll just copy and paste that. And again, this is our unlanded event. So we'll say, whoops, we'll say standing. Okay, so really all we did there, hopefully this should work. I don't think I forgot anything. Yeah, I basically duplicated that functionality with an enum. So it's um, kind of a nicer way to work, keeps things a little bit cleaner, and you can keep track of all your different states in one place instead of having this uh, humongous list of uh, variables on the side. So we don't even need that anymore. Okay. All right, real quick, let's take a look at some questions. Uh, how does extract sprites actually work? Um, I'm hoping Michael Noland is in the chat and he could probably speak to that. Okay, cool, cool. And fully functional tile map collisions will be in 4.8 release. Yes. So um, the tile map stuff that I showed a few minutes ago really quickly, uh, in 4.7 collisions are were not implemented. It was a work in progress. And so in 4.8, the tile maps do actually have collisions, so yes, you can build out your levels with a tile map using collisions. All right, uh, can you use a state machine to handle sprite states? Uh, well, no, not in the sense of a, that's what we basically just covered, right? Just to reiterate, uh, you can't use an animation blueprint with a sprite currently, down the road perhaps. So instead, uh, I'm just uh, keeping track of all my states uh, via an, an enumeration. All right, how are we doing on time? Ten minutes. What else can we handle? Um, let me take a look at the notes. All right, maybe we can get started on health and damage. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so back in our Blueprint folder here, I'm going to right-click, and uh, we'll do a little bit of UMG real fast. Hopefully we'll get through this in time. We're going to create a widget, and uh, we'll just call that uh, widget health bar or actually you know what we'll put we'll put everything in this so we'll just call it HUD for heads up display so we open it up we see our canvas here and under common we're gonna go ahead and use what's called a progress bar so if we drag that in there's our little progress bar you can put that wherever you like I'm not gonna mess around too much with the aesthetics here but we'll drag this out and you see uh, over in the side here under appearance we have percent we start sliding this around, you can see this thing fill up and uh, you know raise and lower its level there. So we want to tie that to the character's health. So probably the first thing we should do is uh, give our character some health. So if we go over to the character blueprint, and from the graph we're going to add a variable, and we'll just call this, we'll call it health current, how about? And we'll change its default type to float. And uh, we'll set that to 1. Okay, so now we have a health value that we can work with. And from our widget here, um, well, first things first, let's go ahead and get this up on screen. So from our character again, on begin play, uh, one thing I like to do, this is where 
this is where we're going to set up our widget and actually apply it to the character screen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a sequence. I kind of like to um, keep things a little bit tidier. So let's go ahead. And uh, what we want to do is um, we'll start typing widget. And we're going to create a widget. The widget that we're creating is the one that we just made called widget HUD. And uh, we need to figure out who is owning this. So uh, we are going to get the controller. So get controller. And we'll wire that up there. Uh, let's see, is that what we want? Uh, let me think here. We want the player controller, actually. Yeah, so let's get player controller. There it is. So this is the actual player that the, uh, or sorry, the controller that the player is um, interfacing with the pawn through. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to right click and promote this to a variable, and we'll call this uh, health bar in case we need to refer to this later. And then from there, we'll go ahead and add the widget to the viewport. So you just type add, and you'll see add to viewport is highlighted. And I think we're good to go. So we hit play, and there is our tiny little health meter. What happened? Did I not save and compile? Let's take a look again. That's better. Okay. All right. Back to the widget. So let's go ahead and reset this down to zero. And uh, we want to tie this to the actual health variable that we created on our character. So we'll go ahead and hit bind. And we're going to create a binding. And that's going to open up this uh, new event graph here. And the first thing that we want to do is call out and communicate to our character. So we're going to do a cast. And uh, what do we call him? My dude or something? Yeah. Cast a BP dude. And uh, let's see. Again, we want to uh, get the player. Let's, let's get the character. Whoops. Get player character. Wire that into there. OK, so uh, then we want to find out what his health is. So let's uh, look for his health. So get current health, health current rather. And we're going to wire that directly in. OK. So we hit play, and now you can see that our health meter is filled up. All right, running out of time. So real quick, um, we're not going to be able to create an enemy today, but uh, we can simulate taking damage real quick here to show you how this works. So I'm going to right click and uh, I'm going to create an event. I'm just going to use the backslash key here. And uh, we'll get the character's current health. And from there, we're going to subtract a value. And again, just for testing, we'll say uh, 0 0.1. Oops. We're going to subtract one tenth of his health. And we'll go ahead and set this. That'll be the new value of the character's health. OK. So we hit play, and there we go. So you see, as I'm hitting the backslash key, the health meter is declining there. That's really all there is to uh, hooking up a simple health meter. You can go in there, adjust the colors, set uh, textures on the health meter so it's a little more visually interesting. Um, but uh, obviously, the next thing we would need to do is actually kill the character. and. Five minutes left. Maybe we could do that. So um, let's get that value, and we'll say if that is less or equal to zero. If that's true, then we're going to go ahead and set a new state, and um, that's our enum over here. We'll set him to dead. OK, so he's dead. Awesome. But uh, we need to update our animation. So uh, yeah, this is getting a little crazy up in here. So I think what I want to do is um, let's do a switch on uh, state. Yeah, switch on character state. And now when we come out of our uh, update animation here, So if we're jumping, we'll do this. 
And if we are running, we're going to go ahead and do this. And if we're dead, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to set a new flipbook. But I don't think we created our death animation yet. We don't need this anymore. Or this. So back to our character sprites really quick. Let's make a dead animation. Create flipbook. We'll call it A dead. All right, single frame. And we're going to set that flipbook right here to dead. All right, I think that's good. So again, running around. Oh, but we are not. Hold on. Let's just see if we can get this working. All right, what did I miss? Uh, oh, that's why. I wired up the wrong one. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay, so running, jumping. Looks like I didn't wire that up properly either. So jumping. We need to set our jumping. It's down here. All right, so he should work. What did I miss here? Let's take a look. All right, shoot, running out of time. So if I'm less than zero, then I'm going to go ahead and set to dead. So if we're coming in here, we're picking. Uh, let's see, we need our enum. There we go. Let's try that. There we go. We had to get our actual state and pump it into the select. All right, so now if I kill myself, boom, we're dead. All right, so obviously that's not super great. Uh, two minutes left. Let's go ahead and fix this really quick. We'll go ahead and disable input. And I probably need to get the player controller. OK, let's give it a shot. All good. Doom, 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 doom. All right, so now I'm actually trying to run around, and I can't go anywhere. OK, so at this point, I'd probably want to do something like have a little delay, play some particle effects, and then you know reopen the level and get it started again. But we have like three minutes left. I'm just about out of time. Uh, real quick, can I answer any questions? Um, let's see. Yeah, there's a lot of questions left over. You know what? Go ahead and hit up the forum thread uh, in the events section, and uh, we'll see if we can't get those things answered. But uh, thank you very much for coming. Hopefully you learned a couple of things, and uh, we'll do another one of these. We'll keep building on this project for, for a little while, I suppose. As long as you guys are getting value out of it, just uh, shout out in that thread and let us know what you want to see. So thank you very much. Yeah.